Sudden cardiac death is a major unsolved clinical problem in the UK with almost 100,000 patients dying each year. This is equivalent to almost one patient dying every six minutes. A lot of these deaths are due to malignant ventricular arrhythmias, like ventricular fibrillation, when the heart goes into a chaotic rhythm which fails to sustain life. A lot of these patients who die suddenly have previous heart disease, like that of a heart attack or they have heart failure. Over the last two decades or so, one of the major advancements in cardiology is the development of the ICD, the implantable cardioverted defibrillator. This is an implanted device, a bit like a pacemaker, but it doesn't only just pace the heart. If the patient goes into ventricular fibrillation, it will also shock the heart back to normal rhythm. And it's been shown in many clinical studies to effectively stop patients dying suddenly. To pick up patients who might benefit from the ICD, the NICE guidelines advise us to use clinical parameters. These parameters are rather crude and therefore the aim of the key area of research in our group is to refine these characteristics and to improve risk stratification for the use of the ICD. When someone suffers a heart attack, that part of the heart muscle is dead. The healthy tissue surrounding it undergoes changes, but these changes are patchy. This affects the electrical propagation of the heart muscle, and we can measure this abnormality by restitution of the myocardium. The important thing about MRI is it really gives us exquisitely good uh, pictures of the heart and we're able to identify with excellent uh, reproducibility and spatial resolution, abnormal function which can be quantified and most importantly of all we're able to identify scar which is very important for the management of the patients. The current guidelines use uh, functional assessments based on echocardiography which are really quite crude. Now these are the typical images that we get in a patient who has had a heart attack. These are functional images and you can see this area of the heart is not thickening like it is at the front of the heart and we see this in more detail here in a short axis. The problem with these functional images is they don't tell us anything about scar tissue within the heart and they don't tell us whether this muscle is alive or dead and has the potential for recovery. And we do that with a technique called late gadolinium enhancement. And this really gives us almost virtual histology. Importantly, the scar isn't completely homogenous. And we're now realising this, that if what we look at scar in this region and magnify it, there's an area, usually at the border of the heart attack, the grey zone area, where there is a mixture here seen in histology of scar tissue in blue and normal muscle in the pink area and these areas are almost certainly important for the development of serious ventricular arrhythmias and what we think is we will be able to measure this with our new electrical mapping and correlate it with our MRI measures which give us very fine anatomical detail. The innovative aspect of the research is to use a 12 lead ECG to create the electrical map of the heart and we've had to overcome a number of challenges to achieve that. This is an example of a patient. We need to make a lot of measurements of each of these 12 leads, not just in this one, but also in the many other drivetrains necessary for collecting the data. To do that effectively and without having errors creep in, we needed to write a program in MATLAB. The program gives us the opportunity to check that it's made the correct measurements if we zoom in on that, we can see that it's correctly picked out the start of the QRS complex, the peak of the T wave and the return to baseline. The data goes into these graphs and on the left here we have a patient who has an ICD who's had their life saved by it. On the right we have a patient who has an ICD but hasn't had an arrhythmia. These patients are otherwise identical. They're both patients who've had heart attacks, they have weak hearts, they have positive ventricular stimulation studies, and we couldn't separate them on clinical grounds. But we see some very interesting differences between the graphs. The patient who hasn't had the arrhythmia has lines that are close together and they're moving in sync with one another. The patient who had the arrhythmia has quite marked separation in the lines and also the lines are moving more erratically. So we have some very interesting preliminary data, but we're wanting to take this forwards with our ICD-IRS study. 
This aims to recruit 160 patients over the course of the next two years. We're going to be performing cardiac MRI scans and a restitution study on all these patients. And we're very hopeful for this combination of the electrical and anatomical maps in this larger number of patients will give us very interesting data that has the potential to improve ICD risk stratification in the future. The Da Vinci Award has come at a brilliant time. Together with the support from the Leicester Cardiovascular Biomedical Research Unit, we can take our research to the next level. This forms an excellent platform for us to collaborate with industry. We are very hopeful that our research work will be translated for the benefit of our patients.